Hey guys, Florida Man Dan here with season two of the Florida Man 40K podcast. Uh, before I get into intros, I'm going to just uh, take a moment and let y'all know we appreciate you listening to us through season one, and uh, we've got some changes. That's why we took a, a hiatus there. Um, Jimmy is moving to kind of just going to join every once in a while. He is focusing on writing a book right now, so that's what he's using his free time for. But he'll still be on the show every now and then, and uh, hopefully that book, he gets it finished up, and we'll get it published, and uh, y'all can read it. So, without further ado, I will introduce the usual, the consistent, John Lennon. Hello, hello, everyone. Good to be back. Uh, We did have to take a little bit of a break there for Florida Man 40K, but I am excited to be back and recording because I enjoyed it the last time, and uh, it's good to be here. But uh, we do have a couple of new faces with us as well, which I'm very excited about. One of them uh, you may know if you're a regular listener of the show. And that is the one and only William Taylor, no longer our uh, Tau expert, and instead uh, focusing on a new army. Well, that's right. I'm a permanent fixture here now on Florida Man 40K. Uh, ever since 9th edition rolled out and Tau have seemed to take a, a nosedive, I've refocused my efforts on Imperial Guard and I've been getting uh, pretty good success with them, or recently going 4 and 1 at a GT uh, using. Death Corps of Krieg Death Riders. Um, that's my little claim to fame is uh, I'm now a horse girl. So I'll be here uh, more frequently. Yeah, our very own horse girl. Um, one thing, Will did take the horses to uh, GT not too long ago. Got four and one top five finish, and uh, they wrote about him in a Goonhammer article. So you can go check that out and read about that list. And our... Last, but certainly not least, newest addition. Uh, you may have heard him on the Sister Act podcast. Uh, you may know him as uh, Ogre Mittens, Tim Penny. Hello, hello. Good to be here. Um, just like Will, uh, I played uh, I played Tau when I got back into 7th and 8th edition. Uh, I originally played in 2nd and 3rd. I actually played Chaos back then. Uh, and uh, now I'm pretty much uh, all Imperium. Uh, so Marines, uh, Custodes, and uh, definitely Sisters. Um, I kind of um, basically took the idea of putting Mortifiers in a list and said, well, what if I just take more? Uh, and that worked out pretty well. Uh, recently went to a GT and made it all the way to the top table and lost the final game by five points uh, with a ridiculous 12 Mortifier list. Uh, I'm not running 12 anymore, but I'm definitely looking for an excuse to run 12 again. Yeah, so um, <laughs> as you'll find out, Tim is a very uh, outside-the-box thinker, I'll say, uh, as is Will. Um, kind of all of us can be, but Tim will find those crazy things and just make them work. Uh, so we'll probably talk about that more later, but our next topic that we will go ahead and pick up is we'll just tell you kind of about what we're planning to do with the show. We've got a lot of options moving forward. There's a ton of content, a ton of stuff we can cover. Uh, Ninth edition is insane. Uh, I like it a lot. Um, Hopefully COVID's going away in the next few months and we can start going back to events more often. But until that point, we're here to help you get better at the game as a whole. Uh, We're going to talk about missions, talk about armies, talk about specific secondaries, uh, Probably we'll do a secondary, well, first a mission breakdown where we've got uh, a mission, uh, an episode that we'll cover. And then from there, we can go into secondaries. We'll cover secondary trees. We can do army secondaries. There's a ton of stuff that we can cover. So uh, keep following us and promise you'll enjoy it. Absolutely. It's it's just honestly just good to be back. Um, Obviously, you know, with COVID and everything else going on, we all decided to take our little break. But the goal is to kind of get back into the swing of things. Uh, we used to do Florida Man 40K relatively regularly, and we are looking to get right back to that point. So I'm really excited to have new co-hosts on, you know, some good friends of mine, teammates on Bro- Team Brohammer, uh, as well as, you know, guys who have some podcasting experience previously. And uh, I- I'm honestly just kind of excited to be here. Um, I know uh, today we, you know, we kind of wanted to do a little bit of catch up, get back to where we were. You know, we haven't really done any episodes talking about ninth edition codexes. Especially, you know, there's a brand new Codex on the block in Codex Death Guard. Um, so we'll be talking about that in a little bit as well. Uh, but mostly we just want to get back in the swing of things. Yeah. Well, so I guess uh, to, to 
put our best foot forward. What do you think this season of uh, 40K is going to offer to us? I know hopefully uh, COVID will start to die down and restrictions will start being lifted and people will start getting vaccinated. Uh, When do you think we'll start really seeing the ITC season for 2021 really kick off? I mean, there's going to be events leading up to a certain point. So, you know, it's always a question of whether or not you personally choose to go to them. Uh, You know, that's a decision, you know, we all make individually. Um, I'm really hoping to make a push forward in the summer where I'm not expecting to go anywhere anytime soon. But I'm hoping that, uh, you know, by the time summer comes around, uh, maybe if ATC happens, that's always, you know, the big one for us as a team where we absolutely love ATC. And that's, you know, the event that we enjoy the most. So I'm really hoping that we'll go ahead and go do that. But we will have to kind of wait and see if that actually develops. But ideally, I'm going to try to make a push you know, starting in the summer, start going to events again, and uh, maybe, you know, throughout the fall, hit a couple of the big ones if some of the ones like Nova and SoCal actually happen this year. Makes sense. Anybody else got any <laughs> hopes for what this year has to offer? I, I'm kind of with uh, John. I'm not, due to the nature of my job, I have to bid uh, all my time off. And um, uh, basically during the summer and during the uh, winter early spring, it's really hard to just kind of get like ad hoc time off uh, for my job. So if, especially if there's any events around that time, I kind of need to know ahead of time. Uh, and summer, I thought, I thought bidding uh, time off for an event in the summer was a little bit optimistic this year for an event that may or may not happen. Uh, so instead, I decided to double down on events in the fall and the winter. Um, so right now, um, I am going to Iron Halo because uh, Jason Horn was nice enough to invite me back, uh, myself and John Lennon, because John Lennon won it. I won Best Sportsman. Uh, so we got two free tickets there. So I'm definitely going to that. Um, and then I bid off for uh, Nova, SoCal, Crucible, um, something else, the name escapes me, and then uh, obviously <laughs> LVO. And then here and there, especially during like the slower season, like the fall or whatever, if uh, events are going and there's any GTs happening in Miami or Orlando, I'll obviously go to those as well. Makes sense. Dan, what about you? You got any hopes for this uh, this year? Yeah, so my big thing is um, I work in the public, so I have to be very limited and careful right now. But uh, I'm hoping by ATC, that's kind of the benchmark where I'm hoping where I can go back to uh, going full time, hitting all these GTs. I don't have any solid plans besides if ATC happens, I'm going. But I've got armies I'm getting ready. I am all in as soon as I get that okay. But I'm, I'm being cautious right now, especially because Central Florida, uh, I'll say they're not the best at handling anything so <laughs> we'll see how the next uh, couple months go and if things get back to controllable and reasonable then i'll i'll start getting back into the gts and uh rtts getting primed up for atc right on and what uh what armor armies do you think uh everybody's gonna collect this year like is there anybody gonna start anything new or are we seeing with the uh, old reliables uh Dan, if you went uh, last, go ahead and go first for this one. Okay, yeah, so I, uh, if you listened previously, am notorious for just playing every single army under the sun, randomly just pick it up, let's go. So I did, uh, a couple months ago, decide Harlequins were going to be the route, so I got an entire Harlequins army. Will is actually painting it up for me, um, and it looks beautiful. They're a ton of fun to play. I really like that play style. Uh, so I've got my Harlequins, Death Guard, uh, which we'll get into a lot more detail later on. Uh, I went ahead and Will actually also painted my Death Guard. And uh, so I've, I've got some of the new pieces, the Lord of Violence. I picked up some Death Shroud Terminators so I can run uh, Death Guard and or Chaos Soup. I actually think Chaos Soup is going to be better than pure Death Guard. little spoiler for later. Um, I've got Custodes, Admech uh, on the Pipeline. Well, the armies are done, just painting those up, getting those painted. Uh, and then we'll see where, where I go from there. Part of me wants to get a Slanesh army going. Uh, Marines are always good, so I might pick up a Marine army again. 
Oh, Dark Angels. I got Dark Angels too. So basically everything. I'll talk about whatever you want. Uh, whenever I'm playing them, I'll talk about them. But right now, I'm focused Harlequins and Death Guard. Right on. What about you, Tim? I know that you just recently said that you've been mostly playing Imperium, but this year, hopefully, a majority of our armies get up- updated. What are you, what are you looking forward to? Are you thinking of maybe collecting something new that isn't Imperium or Tau? Uh, let's see. I've been I've been finding the uh. I've been fighting the urge to return to chaos for so long, but um, man, those monster rash uh, lists that are looking possible, and I'm assuming you're going to continue to be Could possible. Those those always kind of um, grab my eye. Come back know, to whenever, us, Tim. Whenever whenever I see like you know chaos knights backed up by uh, like you know uh, sex thermal backed up by like nerglings and, and pox bringers and stuff like that, or numortarian and uh, keeper keeper rush, all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's the stuff that does make me want to play Chaos. However, each of those models is like $160 or something insane like that, and you usually have to buy three or four. And let's be honest with ourselves, it, we know it's a gateway drug. Uh, so really kind of holding off from that. Um, I could see myself going back to Tau, but it would have to be a huge, uh, huge overhaul. Like the uh, Think of like covenant style like they overhaul all the auxiliaries they update the models they give them good rules and instead of just being nothing but battle suits and drones you actually have like uh just a collection of different races like with like assault and and all sorts of different roles uh because towel just kind of got way too one uh one dimensional for me last year and i didn't realize how little fun i was having until i played like another army and i was kinda like oh well hey the assault phase is fun so basically, uh, yeah, Tau, I could see Tau bring, my, bring me back into the fold, but it would have to be a huge overhaul of rules and pretty much the entire model line and alien auxiliaries. Uh, mostly just, yeah, I'm planning to stick to probably about 80-90% sisters because they are a faction that really seems to reward uh, repetition, um, just like Harlequins. And they, they've announced a bunch of new models. Just this morning, they actually announced it looks like a, a Terminator equivalent, which is ridiculous in all the right ways. So I am here for that, and I'll probably try to figure out a way to completely abuse it with, like, 12 mortifiers and, I don't know, 15, 18 of those things, whatever the unit size is. You, you didn't need um, another You didn't need another model. <laughs> you didn't need another thing with Meltas on it, man. <laughs> Oh, I, I love it. Uh, no, it was kind of good. I painted uh, 4,000 points of sisters, roughly, uh, this past year. Um, and that first 1,000 points was, was rough. So I am oh. I am ready for new stuff. And that's probably, yeah, that's probably going to be it for me. Maybe some, uh, maybe some custodies. I kind of want to redo my marine paint scheme uh, to match my other armies and do purple and gold. But that's probably about it. Right on. Well, I agree with you on the uh, the Tau stuff, uh, but we'll get in that later. Uh, Lennon, I know that you play whatever is good. However, I did see what you've been working on this morning. Uh, what do you think you're going to be playing this year? All right. So um, I, I've traditionally been a Tyranny Jeans Cult player. So there's always the caveat of if those get good, I'm going to be back. But uh, pretty much the last you know year, year and a half, I've been uh, strictly Imperium. Uh, ever since you know Nova last year, I've just been playing um, Space Marines as my main army, and um, man, I, the White Scars are still so good. Like they're not really going anywhere. Uh, I definitely, you know, I have that army, you know, painted and ready to go. Anytime I feel the need to change the list, I'll probably, you know, go buy the model I need to paint it, update it. But uh, frankly, I, you know, in, in 2020, I painted uh, over 6,000 points of Space Marines. So like I've got that pretty solid core because I really only painted the good stuff. <laughs> so I, I feel like I'm ready to um you know play whatever space marines are ready. But I really trying to focus this year on growing my overall Imperium. Um, just like Tim, I really love Sisters of Battle. Um, I really enjoy you know playing them a lot. Um, I really like uh this list I've been working on that's a, a Sisters and Guard soup. I've got all the Guard 100% painted. I've got a full Guard collection already. But you know working on getting the Sisters up to par. And then um, as part of the, uh, again, having all the Imperium, uh, I've actually been working a lot on Knights recently, just Imperial Knights. Um, maybe it's because they're finally not considered to be good, but uh, I, I really actually just, I'm really just enjoying painting Imperial Knights. Um, they're, they're a really cool army. I just didn't want to do it when they were, you know, kind of 
OP and everyone was playing Imperial Knights. You know, I like to be a, you know, if I'm not going to be playing my white scars, I, I'm trying to be a special snowflake. So I um I waited a little bit on that, but I'm really enjoying uh, how knights look so far. Um, I haven't really played much with them, uh, mostly just getting them painted because, you know, I figure if I've got seven models, I can't, I don't have an excuse to not have the whole thing painted before I put it on the table. Right on. Did, did yeah, we lose uh, I think that's, that's oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm still here. Uh, gotcha. yeah, I think, I think that's really, I think that's really it for me. I'm, I'm, I'm resisting the call of chaos so far. Um, I'll paint like an occasional Slanesh unit here and there, but, uh, you know, one of the guys I live with has a, a full Slanesh army already. So whenever I need to scratch the itch, I just, uh, you know, take the models off the shelf and play it. I don't, I don't have to actually buy anything, which is kind of nice. Uh, yeah, really only things I want to buy is just, uh, increase my sister's collection, increase the knight collection. Um, at that point, I'll be playing pretty much every Imperium army except for Admech, which I'm, uh, I'm very happy about. Right on, man. Uh, right. I know that Tell eventually I'm gonna... well. well, so <laughs> I, I probably will end up, uh, scratching the chaos itch. Uh, I know that it's really is hard to resist. Um, but I mean, if thousand sums get some sort of wacky, uh, <laughs> update or if they make, uh, Zinch demons like really crazy, uh, I, I don't know if I'll be able to help myself and not get in there, but uh, honestly, my next big foray into a different army is the the Dark Eldar update. I'm so very excited about uh, Dark Eldar, you know, being revisited, uh, reworked for Ninth Edition. I'm very curious as how um, it's going to change how the army works. Uh, I'm really excited to see what kind of hints that book gives us for Norma Eldar, and um, I've always wanted to play Dark Eldar and you know, this is just a great excuse to do it because I haven't really touched a ninth edition codex. I, I don't play Marines. I don't play uh, Death Guard. You know, I'm playing the worst faction and then a mediocre faction uh, and waiting for those two to get updated. So this has kind of reinvigorated uh, my drive to kind of, how you say, like just get into something new, you know? I love the models. I think Drezar is one of the coolest uh, new models that they've ever done. Like his his rework into plastic is fantastic, and uh, yeah, I'm just I'm really excited about that. I the Codex can't come soon enough, and I've been selling and uh, doing commission paint work uh, to get ready for the release so that I can hit the ground running. Yeah. So first of all, I'm going to say all y'all need to play Chaos. Uh, I've got Thousand Suns, I've got Night Lords, I've got the big monsters for you, Tim. Like, just come on over, I got all the Chaos, and, uh, you guys need to do that, because Chaos is the only army. Uh, and besides that, I'm super excited for you to get the Dark Eldar Will. Like, that's such a cool army to me, I love them, so. Yeah, they're, they the aesthetic is, uh, really fantastic, uh, and I'm just... I'm just ready for something different, something that isn't, you know, uh, an immobile gun line, you know, something that's fast and can actually do melee stuff because uh, that's a, a which we'll call it a, a phase that I don't really interact with ever. Yeah. And like melee is honestly one of the most important faction or phases faction. I'm an idiot. It's one of the most important phases in the game uh, because mobility is how you win, especially in ninth edition. And, manipulating and maneuvering the close combat phase wins and loses games. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I, I figured quickly we could just go around. What Does anybody have any goals this year? Uh, like, do you want to try to get best in faction or do you want to win like a, uh, how you say, like a paint uh, award or anything? I'm kind of hesitant to put any goals down because I did this last time and then the year just wasn't real. I should have so, yeah. um, <laughs> You know, my goal is to play a team tournament this year. Uh, I would like to win it, ideally, but uh, really just miss team tournaments the most. And uh, that's the kind of you know stuff that I, I really want to do. Um, so I kind of put my goals this year as like things that I thought were a little more in my control. So um, I just tried to hit, uh, I'm trying to paint 12,000 points this year, basically just going for 1,000 points every month. Uh, I did that last year, got just over 12,000 points. Um, so just trying to rack that out again because the pile of shame is just ridiculous. And it, it did grow smaller this year, but not by much. <laughs> Painted 12,000 points and managed to buy enough that the pile of shame is still hanging around. So that's actually, uh, trying that's to just drink really that. Good. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but that's like a really good uh, goal and idea. I, I didn't think about 
that. That's a uh, that's actually impressive. You did twelve thousand points last year too. Yeah, just did just over twelve thousand points. It was actually an accident. Like I didn't try to uh, do that many, but then um, you know, someone's like, I painted this many points, and I was they texted me that while I was sitting in a car for an hour. I'm like, well, now I have to go check. So <laughs> counted it up. <laughs> that's pretty cool. What about you, Tim? You got anything? Your 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 goals for this year? Um, my I still have surprisingly uh, a pretty big sister's uh, pile of shame. I have a I seriously have a collection of boxes in my garage for Sisters Marines Custodies where I could I could run my own uh, FLGS, but only for three factions. <laughs> um, some Admech and Knights uh, slipped in there as well, so I gotta I gotta deal with that. Um, but uh, I think. I don't know. Most of it is just pretty much for alternate color schemes. If I'm going to run two orders or for breaking stuff, because sisters are kind of small and dainty. Um, Mm -hmm. So a lot of it is mostly just there where if, if that stuff breaks like to the point where it breaks like really bad, I can just, or I can't repair it. I can just immediately paint up a new one, replace it and not feel terrible about it. Um, I do have, I have a bunch of knights and one is fully assembled. One is half assembled. And then I just have a, bunch of resin and plastic so i need to put that together because uh even though knights do have their issues um i think i think they can actually um they might be able to hang actually uh the changes to bring it down kind of uh helped the uh small knights and there's Mm -hmm. seems like with the faq which we can talk about later there's definitely more of an emphasis on playing the primary game um and Knights can uh, play the primary pretty hard for the first two or three turns, uh, right for on. sure. And so, I think I think I think going back and forth and just uh, kind of trading even on primary and then winning on secondaries is kind of a lost cause right now. Anyhow, or super dicey at the minimum. So, uh, in a roundabout way, that kind of helps them. So that kind of makes me excited to to paint up my knights and get them on the table. Right um, on. But that's, so also, that's pretty much it. Just expanding my premium collection. Yeah, work, working through your backlog and expanding your collection. Cool, cool. Dan, what about you? You got any goals this this year? Stick with one faction the whole year, maybe? Uh, for one month, and then you'll be lucky. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I um, I don't know. My goal, my goals are very dependent, like Lennon said, on what the year opens up to. Obviously, the goal is always to just win a GT. Uh, it's one of the most satisfying feelings to win a GT and and be able to have that experience uh it's it's just a ton of fun to me that's that's kind of why i play this game is I, I love that rush and you only get it unless you're like lennon or siegler you only get that very rarely so that's huge um so that that would be like the the ultimate goal um but besides that you know just uh continue to play and have fun like <laughs> at the end of the day that that's my goal is just to have fun hang out with the guys um Probably, okay, I do have a more realistic goal. I want to start, I used to love writing. I want to get back into writing about Warhammer. I want to write, uh, I'm working on a uh, Death Guard Codex breakdown right now um, that I'm, I'm figuring out how to publish that, where to publish that and everything. But but that would be realistically my other goal is to get into more, for me, the hobby aspect uh, of writing about Warhammer and putting my thoughts into paper um, or digitally. So that way I can kind of share my thoughts and, and let people see my thought process instead of just like listen to it in a podcast. Uh, but actually writing it down, um, it, it helps me process the information of a new codex. And then maybe when I process that and share it out, other people can benefit as well. So that, that I would say is actually my goal aside from just playing the game, having fun. Right on, man. That sounds like a good idea. I I hope that you can, you know, stick to a, a writing schedule and and you know produce some 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 good work. Yeah, I uh, so far I I accidentally wrote for like two or three hours the other day, and I haven't even gotten out of the HQ section. So like, I'm enjoying oh, it. So that's we'll, good. We'll see where I go from there. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Well, I think that uh, that gets us to our next uh, thing, which is talking shop about 40k. That's probably why everyone's listening, so I'm about it. (laughs) Right on. So 
I guess maybe we should just talk about the most recent release, uh, Death Guard. I know that uh, Lennon's done some homework. I know you've been definitely doing your homework. If you've, you've been writing for <laughs> two hours and not gotten out of the uh, HQs, I'm not too sure how familiar uh, Tim is with him. I think he might have played against him a couple times. Um, and I'm going to be quiet this entire section because I don't know anything other than uh, Guard do okay against them and sh they shake up the meta. All right. Well, uh, I guess I'll just start. Um, first of all, I think I'll just put it out there right now. I think Death Guard is a very good codex. You have to be prepared for them in your army, but I don't, they're not a top three army to me. I'm pure. They're not. I think they are better for Chaos Soup, but I haven't explored all the avenues of exactly how to utilize them in Chaos Soup to the, I mean, most efficient. Obviously, you take a uh, uh, foul blight spawn with the aura of you fight last and throw him in your list. Like your chaos list just got better. But as a whole, I think they are they're cool because they're going to shape the meta, but they're not going to break the game. Which for me, getting a new codex, I like that because it tells me that Games Workshop their internal balance in this book. Uh, is such that it will do what it wants to do very well and you have to be prepared. But it's not going to be so oppressive like the uh, Broviathan list or similar. Like they, from what I, I haven't broken anything yet like that, they're very much to this limit or to that limit, or you can't do this if you're doing this. They're, they're very thought through on all of the interactions of this book. So to me, it feels a lot more balanced. And it's, it's probably, I would say, one of my favorite releases from Games Workshop in, I don't know how long. I think that's a little biased, but I I do agree with you on that one. Lennon, what what do you think? Uh, what do you think Death Guard does to the overall meta, and where do you think they stand right out the gate? Um, I do agree with Dan on uh, some of those aspects, especially that Death Guard are going to reshape the meta without breaking it. Um, having I've played them three times so far, and I've watched another game. Um, they, they do seem really strong. There's a ton of powerful combos in there. Um, the biggest thing is that they're a direct challenge to how Space Marines play the game right now. And Space Marines are widely considered to be the best or one of the best armies. Um, I know some things like Harlequins have like a slightly higher win rate, but I, I personally put Space Marines as the best army in the game. Um, and they're, they're a direct challenge to how Space Marines play the game because of what they do and the defensive auras um, as well as some of the offense that they have are so well suited to killing the typical aggro, you know, close the gap, get within 18 inches and try to kill you um, space Marines. And that strictly is not going to work against death card. Um, <clears throat> at least I haven't found a way for space Marines to just jump into and charge and kill death guard yet. So <clears throat> I'm anticipating that death guard are really going to do the work in early on with the release coming out, they're going to probably get a lot of wins. I bet they're going to get a lot of event wins because it's going to take some time for people to adapt to them. But frankly, I expect that long-term their win rate's going to drop back around to 50-55% without actually needing any nerfs from Games Workshop. Um, I mean, the thing with Death Guard is that when you run them pure, they are going to um, really struggle with speed. And frankly, a mobile army is just going to dance around them and outshoot them and um, just outscore them because it's, you know, Death Guard, are, it's going to be difficult to deny your opponent movement-based uh, secondaries other than by physically blocking off the objective that they want to be on. So in some missions, if there's like six objectives, there's no central, none of them are central, then I really feel like it's going to be hard for Death Guard to stop the opponent from getting a solid primary score. Um, I think that Death Guard are going to end up leaning more towards shooting in the long term because they're going to, you know, everyone's going to have that game where, you know, well, crap, I'm... You know, the White Scars are staying, you know, 23 inches away from me and shooting me with multi mouth attack bikes and bolt guns. And I walk towards them, don't charge, don't really shoot that much. And then they just do it again and they do it again. And I'm not going to win the game this way. Gotcha. Um, but they've got so many powerful rules, so many auras. There's got to be something with Chaos Soup. Um, I've only played uh, against and watched Pure Death Guard. Um, there are a lot of really good tools in the book. So again, would not at all be shocked if uh, Chaos Soup lists start coming out with Death Guard and they are very powerful. Um, warp time is a literal crutch that the entire chaos sub faction relies on. Frankly, um, if you're not playing keep a rush, you're probably using warp time. Right. So, so you would agree with Dan that soup is probably the way to go. You you think that uh, chaos players should still 
abuse warp time as much as they can before it gets to do you uh, think it'll get taken away so i i would bet hard money that it's going to get taken away when games workshop gets around to updating codexes uh that's literally just a question of when as far as i'm concerned um i actually think death guard can be pure competitive i just uh i actually i i think that will actually probably be the most popular route is to go pure not soup um because frankly if you're going soup and death guard I think that you're taking very minimal death guard and it's really a soup list, not a death guard list. Like I don't think 1800 points of death guard and then also taking a, um, a detachment of chaos. I don't think that that's actually going to be the best way to play death guard. I think you're looking at either one very small death guard attachment where you're abusing a couple of auras and, uh, you know, relics and warlord traits in a generic chaos soup list, or you're going pure death guard. Uh, my logic here is that if you go heavy on death guard and you, um, they've restructured how you do, you know, warlord traits with Death Guard, where you have to have a Death Guard warlord to buy additional warlord traits and to buy additional relics. So you're not going to have a super chicken warlord and then get anything from Death Guard. If you know, if the big the big minus one damage three up invuln chicken is your warlord, you're just not getting anything cool from Death Guard. Um, so I I would you know you've got to have a Death Guard warlord to start. Also, I feel like a lot of the strength of Death Guard is in their plague companies. Where you know that's where you get all the, a lot of these different contagions from, and if you're only if you're doing a warp time detachment and a death guard attachment, you only get access to one of the the special contagions. And frankly, I think you're going to want to. Uh, you know, there's there's access to no rerolls, no auras, have movement, extra AP. All those things are so good, but honestly, I I think you need at least two of the faction spe- the sub faction specific uh, contagions. If you do that and take warp time, you have three detachments. You then have to buy the extra warlord traits. You're starting at like three or four command points. I, I think that's too low. Yeah, I agree, and that that's kind of what I was uh, more alluding to. Is I don't think Death Guard plus like a splash. I think Chaos Soup will be uh, still the the most optimal way to run the Chaos Super faction. Uh, but I do think we're going to see pure Death Guard perform very well. It's just de- Chaos especially with still having 8th edition books, is still all about the combos. So um, I think overall there's going to be like two ways to play Chaos moving forward, and that's pure Death Guard or Soup, where you're going to bring a Death Guard detachment. Maybe it's just a patrol for some hyper-durable Terminators and your your Foul Blight spawn. Maybe you bring the Tallyman. I have to read to see if, he's, uh, if his buffs are only in pure death guard or if you just bring him you get those um i gotta double check that but i could see like a patrol an outrider something or not an outrider but a smaller detachment of death guard and then your normal right now pink horrors and smite spams and all the other good stuff so i i agree with lennon there 100 percent. yeah it's gonna be weird though i'm getting to you know all this new stuff uh for death guard um i i do think it's inevitable that you know when they update Thousand Suns, all of their spells are going to target, you know, keyword Thousand Suns. And when they update the Chaos Space Marine book, they're going to target keyword Legion. Um, I really think that that's going to happen. It's purely for me just a question of when is that going to happen. Um, but also, frankly, if you're a Chaos Suit player, it's not that unlikely that this isn't happening in the next six months. It's still not that unlikely that it doesn't happen in the next year because uh, Games Workshop is inconsistent on when they update armies. And, um, you know, Chaos Space Marines did get that kind of 2.0 codex, so they, they've got the old style of rules, but they also got a release not that long ago, so I wouldn't be shocked if a lot of other armies came first. Um, so there's still going to be plenty of viable time to play Chaos Soup. Um, it, I think really, you, you're you probably going to see like that little Death Guard detachment in almost any Chaos Space Marine base list. Um, I don't know exactly what the most optimal one is going to be, but I would really not be surprised, like, you know, you you, you occasionally see fringe Chaos Space Marine lists like World Eaters, you know, Berserkers and Rhinos. I literally can't think of a reason not to have, you know, a patrol of Death Guard and a Foul Bite spawn with all the fight last and the, you know, shut off your combo wars. Or, um, and maybe you make him, you know, a Warlord and his Contagion is the one where you get extra AP against things in range because that's not Death Guard units, that's friendly units. Um, pending an FAQ, of course, but... You know, maybe you, you take, like, that's where you bring Death Guard in as a soup element. Um, I But basically, I think Death Guard are either a small patrol or pure. And I'm actually going to go out there and say that I think Mortarian is going to end up not being the go-to. He's, he's good, 
He's very good. Um, but he's a lot of points and he's only in one spot at a time. And his damage output is a little lower than it used to be, even though his durability is way up. Um, I, I think that Death Guard are going to end up needing more board control units and more shooting elements to contend with, you know, faster, annoying MSU armies that are going to try to surround them. Yeah, and uh, to jump back in, the two two things of note. One, uh, Tallyman, both of his buffs are, uh, you don't have to be pure Death Guard. So one, you pick a uh, Plague Company core unit and just give them plus one to hit. We build entire lists around Prescience, which is Warp Charge 7. So getting, even though it's more limited, it has to be Death Guard unit you're buffing. That's such a huge buff, and you can do it concurrently with Prescience. So you can have two different units getting the improved ballistic skill. So you're just, you're getting more efficiency in your list. And then Tallyman, of course, is basically worth three CP. Because on a seven plus in your command phase, you get a command point in addition to the one that you get normally. So I definitely, I think uh, Tallyman, Foul Blight Spawn, a uh, unit of 20 Pox Walkers, HQ of choice, and then probably whatever terminators you're feeling that's going to be kind of your core death guard that you float around and put into soup armies um but mortarion that's actually a topic i really want to talk about so i'm glad you you kind of transitioned into that lenin because to me mortarion like you said he's almost 500 points for a hyper durable unit that moves 12 inches a turn and doesn't kill four primaris marines in combat so a lot of people are afraid of him, saying he's busted, saying he's this, saying he's that. They had the same reaction to Dark Angels. Dark Angels aren't setting the world on fire. They're very good. They're hard to kill, but you can just outmaneuver them and beat them. Um, with an asterisk, of course, because they're like a good pilot uses Dark Angels well. I've lost to Dark Angels more than I've beaten them lately. But um, back to Mortarion. The issue with Mortarion is he is greedy in a faction where you can't have all your eggs in one basket. He takes the best Whirler traits, uh, so you want to keep him back with your army to hand out those buffs, Arch Contaminator being one of the biggest ones. But if you do that, you don't have him taking the Droning, which is your half movement, and heat-seeking missile into the opponent. You get one or the other. So in pure Death Guard, he's just kind of awkward and doesn't quite support the army the way you need him to. And then if you soup, he has to be the warlord unless someone else has a similar rule. So if you put Magnus on a supreme command, then then you can make Magnus the warlord. But really, if I'm souping, I probably want my warlord to be, like Lennon alluded to earlier, the lord of change so I can make him more durable and have him be, be that unkillable force. Mortarion, he can be the unkillable force, but he's 200 points more than the lord of change and... Lord of Change probably does more damage throughout the game. So it's just to me, if I'm using him in a monster mash list, he takes away from the more efficient monsters. And if I'm using him in pure Death Guard, he's taking away the efficiency of the buffs where I need them to be in the army. So it's this awkward, he doesn't quite have a place. Now, if you're running like a bunch of Chaos Knights or maybe you could put him in with Keeper Rush, like there are places where he can fit. But to me, the, the main archetypes where I would want him, he's just a square peg in a round hole. And again, I get he's durable. You can math hammer and look at all these crazy numbers. Well, those are averages. Dice happen. Sometimes he'll die turn one to four, mul six multi melters, whatever. Sisters of Battle exist. They can just hit him with flat nine damage. He'll fail some feel no pains. Like, I, can, I get it. He could potentially tank all of those, take three wounds, and just be there for five turns. Or... You have a fail point, he hits that fail point, he's gone turn one, 25% of your army's done. Like, to me, it's all eggs in one basket in an army that is already all eggs in one basket with their Death Star. As a Sisters player, Tim, what do you think about that? Tim? Uh, I, yeah, I'm here, I'm here. I just had to <laughs> put my paintbrush down. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I agree 100%. I think you're going to see him because he looks he looks fun to play um and i think he will be in a monster mash list and i'll i'll touch on that in a little bit because i i agree with dan and i disagree with dan on some small stuff uh about that but it's nothing it's nothing like it's no you know uh marvel civil war type disagreements it's just small like well have you considered this but in pure death guard uh i think the thing is um dan hit a lot of stuff on the head he is greedy he kind of sucks list building resources in a strange kind of way uh away from the rest of your list 
and he is a quarter of your army. And the thing is, is uh, at a certain point, if you're trying to win an event, you're going to run into someone who knows how to kill him or to basically kite him or avoid interacting with him. And in either one of those situations, he has been neutralized. Um, and if you're trying to win an event, knowing that you're going to have to go through a player who knows how to neutralize them, it just seems a little, a little coin flippy. And I think um, most people who are trying to win an event are probably going to eventually, at least in a pure Death Guard list, move away from including Mortarian in their list for that reason. Go with something a little more, a little more reliable. Uh, the shooting, the plagues, it, uh, the, all the great infantry is honestly there's a lot of good stuff in that book. And I think if they try to win with pure Death Guard, they'll they probably will not include Mortarian for those reasons. However, a lot of people are gonna you know, be realistic and be like, well, I'm going to this 100-person event. I have not prepared. I'm, I'm hungover. Like, there's no way I'm going to win it. I'm just going to go bring my pure DG and Morty, and we're just going to... I'm so excited that he's T8, and he's not going to die in one turn, and let's just go have a good time. And, I mean, you can't... Top table doesn't matter if you don't get through Mortari in, you know, round three. So you got to be prepared for it. Uh, as a Sisters player, I am not... I'm evolving my list for it. I'm not ultra concerned uh just because multi melters are a thing i can stay 36 inches back rerolls uh outside of their range um i can reroll wounds against psychers before he used to be able to pass off to his uh terminators and i would actually lose the uh, reroll wounds versus psychers because now i was wounding against the terminators who are not psychers uh so now i basically get to be you know t8 reroll uh rerolling uh, if I'm within, if I was close enough to, uh, for combo flamer range, I can even pop plus one to wound as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a little bit razor's edge because now we're kind of getting dancing with uh, charge ranges and plague ranges. Uh, so I'd rather just avoid trying to set up the plus one to wound uh, with Holy Trinity and just use Miracle Dice and and numbers instead um, to deal with him. And multi multimoles have to be good at dealing with the rest of the army as well. Um, also, uh, mortifiers, uh, they're shooting the heavy bolters kind of don't really do much into death guard. Um, you're wounding on fours, uh, you're hitting on threes or fours, depending if you advanced or not. Uh, you're only doing one damage. Uh, you could probably chip away at pox walkers and plague marines, stuff like that. It, it, it would take a lot of shots to really start putting down terminators. But their melee is actually pretty good. There's uh, 15 attacks per model, strength 6, AP 2, damage 1. Uh, they can't get buffs, and they can't get buffs taken away. So they really don't care about a lot of the stuff that happens. The only thing they could potentially care, care about is if they charge into dudes with uh, size, swords, flails, whatever, and they get hit with the, uh, you know, the fight last or the count is not charging, and they have to get swung at first. Uh, depending on what they charge into, uh, they may not like that. But they are they are weirdly sturdy, being T five five wounds with a feel no pain. But um, but yeah. yeah, if I have to interact in the assault phase, mortifiers would be how I would do it. Uh, besides that, uh, sisters are faster, uh, and they can be faster on demand, especially if you're taking jump pack girls or or a lot of a lot of my armies are currently uh, are basically mounted infantry at this point. A lot of transports and infantry. Uh, backed up by mortifiers and um, so they can be faster and then they can especially when they need to advance an x amount of distance or more um, with the banners being free i can use multiple x faith in a single movement phase to make sure that uh, all the all the girls i'm trying to score with or screen with can get where they need to be with miracle dice so it's definitely i have to change my game i have to change my list a little bit but not to the point where I am uh, ultra concerned about really ruining my matchups into the rest of the meta. Yeah, and you, you touched on something there too that I think is important. Um, and that is, you know, Death Guard, it's all about debuffing the opponent. A lot of that is character auras, which they can get up to 12 inch auras on. So it's like super powerful if you're crashing into the core of the Death Guard army. But that core only exists in one spot. So if I send Plague Marines, Pox Walkers, any auxiliary to go hold other objectives, if that's what you crash into, I don't have those debuffs in place because I'm just, I can't exist on a large enough piece of the table. You crash into that that part of the army, 
take that and you can throw all 2000 points at 400 points of death guard that has to exist on this objective. You just crash into that and take that from me and death guards so slow, it's hard for them to respond. So as a death guard player, my answer for that is I'm going to take three plague burst crawlers, put them on the objectives in my deployment zone and say like, yeah, you can come tag them and that's annoying, but like you, it's hard for you to shoot them off. So I can go exist in the middle of the table and then have my plague burst crawlers and pox walkers holding back for obsec and for durable, durable firebase. So I, I've got some counterplay, but really if, especially like Harlequins, if they just see, Hey, I can get to this objective through all my haywire, all my fusion that I need to blow up that thing and then use volume, kill all the pox walkers. I take that objective for, for one turn, like they can swing the momentum early and I'm too slow to react and recover that objective. Right on. Um, I mean, I don't have anything <laughs> to add to the conversation, unfortunately, because like I said, I haven't, uh, all I know is that they have army wide minus one. And if they're pure, they have auras that make you minus one toughness and potentially one other thing. Um, what, what kind of list archetypes do you think we're going to see? Like if we were to make a death guard list, like right now on the fly, what, what do you guys think? Uh, you'll see the most of it, or like, how do you think that you would build it? Like, do you guys have any ideas on how you would do that? Terminators and pox walkers. Yeah, uh, Terminators that's that's what I that's the thing I want to see the least is terminators and pox walkers, and then uh, obviously your character support, and then playing with points. Um, uh, at least one drone just to kind of get that that turn one interaction. Uh, your just if nothing else, if you can get a turn one tag with the, the droning, uh, that can really set up the rest of your army. And then if the drone dies after that, like, who cares? Um, and then a Plague Burst Crawler or two, because you also need a way to interact with people that just try to stay away with from you. Because um, they, they do have good shooting, but it's kind of like that typical, like, Marine shooting where it's, like, with, like, that 24-inch range bracket. Um and then I don't think they have any way to kind of like advance a charge or any like real bonuses charge, I think. So you're going to, you're going to play a lot of people who just kind of lay out the plan that I just laid out where it's kind of like, Hey, I want to stay away from them. So terminators and pox walkers, pox walkers feel like a really good core. And then like one plague drone and like a couple of plague burst crawlers feel like a really good way to interact with um, people that try to just not interact with you and it forces gotcha. them to interact and punishes them for staying away from you. Dan, before you jump in, cause I know you want to jump in um, just a, a quick point. There is one thing that I know about, uh, about death guard is there, they do have access or at least parts of them do have access to advance and charge. Um, if you have the plague tree, I don't know if that gets, gets rid of um, your contagions or not, but that plague tree does uh, give an aura of advance and charge for Nurgle demons. And I know the plague drone and the uh, possessed; uh, those are Nurgle demons, so they would be able to have access to that. But go ahead, Dan. Yeah. Um. So my thing, I don't know if I want to try to mitigate the the lack of movement with uh, summoning in the tree because I, I believe you can. The loophole is to just summon that tree, uh, but it, it takes a lot of setup and. I'm not super high on possessed right now. Uh, the best way to look at a possessed unit is they're plague marines with more attacks and more speed for three more points a model. Totally fine. And they get an invulnerable save. Like they're pretty much just better than plague marines, but they don't have obsec. But I don't know if I want to try to invest in mediocre speed that I can, a, a dedicated fast army is still going to be able to hit me first. They're still going to maneuver around that and it's telegraphed because i have to start from the tree and then move so i'm i'm telegraphed in what i'm doing so i i personally my theory i need to play test the drones my current list i don't even have the drones it's i'm going all in on hyper durable i agree with tim the core of your list is going to be blight lord terminators death shroud terminators and pox walkers you're going to a thousand points going into that and support for that at least probably more um, so to me, that is the perfect core. Every list is going to start. You can do a, a unit of 10 blight Lords. You can go MSU, go three units of five. Uh, there, there's a couple different options and, and I don't know how deep we want to get into all those little options right now, but yeah, 
multiple units of Terminators, Poxwalkers behind it, character support. For me, I want to. I'm going to go into three Plague Burst Crawlers to start because that gives you something Chaos has lacked for additions, and that is reliable shooting longer than 24 inch range. You get D3 plus three flat damage, ballistic skill three shots from a unit 36 inches away, and then you get an ignore line of sight, strength eight, AP two, damage flat two, 48 inch gun. You can make it damage flat three. So you just get three of those, they're toughness eight, uh, five up invulnerable saves, you stick them in cover, you do whatever you gotta do. Like they're just a durable, solid fire base that your opponent doesn't necessarily kill quickly. If they're trying to shell your Terminators, they're never going to kill your Plague Burst Crawlers. If they're attacking your Plague Burst Crawlers, or letting your Terminators get close. I'm not trying to make a turn one or turn two play. Death Guard gets stronger the longer the game continues. Their auras get larger. I'm just playing into the middle of the table, holding my back objectives. And I my goal is to win the game irrespective of who I'm fighting against or what their plan is. My goal is to just hold 50% plus of the objectives, take realistic uh, secondaries, and kind of just go exist. Like, that's that's what they do best. That's that's going to be my game plan. Right on. Lennon, if you had to li- write a Death Guard list right now, what's your core? What you got? So, I'm all aboard the, um, the Terminators, and I'm all aboard the Poxwalkers, um, I actually think that uh, you look at the, I don't even remember the names, the uh, one of the different play companies has like the Ferromantic Blight. It's the one that gives an aura of all of our weapons are higher AP when we target you within this aura. Um, I think that one's the best and you go with the shooting based uh, Terminator loadout. And I really think you actually go for the, um, I think that you go for the the Fudded Blight drones over the um, the Plague Burst Crawlers. I like them a lot more. They're the you know, the price t- difference is not insignificant. Um, you can have both, but I, I really prefer the Photo Blight Drones. And specifically, I like them with the Flesh Mores. I really, really think that that, uh, that level of close combat combined with the Heroic Intervention Stratagem that they have, uh, where they can Heroic 6 inches, uh, makes them a lot better at defending your objectives if you need to do that. And they're actually relevant offense. Um, I don't think that you need a tree or anything of the sort. Um, unfortunately, I don't actually think you can summon the tree. Um, I, I remember being told that you couldn't because of either it doesn't have the right keywords, it doesn't have the right rule, whatever it may be. But, um, and then if you take it in a, in a fortification, which you can, you're then going to lose your minus one toughness aura, uh, because you're no longer pure death card. So the, the tree's a little hard, but I, I really like the idea of going with, um, the fetid blight drones and terminators. And I honestly think that that in a more shooting base list is going to end up being one of the more popular versions of death card. Right on, right on. Well, <laughs> I don't really know where to go. From here. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> it's a good thing we have show notes. It's it's true. Well, I mean, like, well, I guess we could talk about what we're gonna go through next. Which I think the next uh, two releases are what Dark Dark Angels and Dark Eldar. Um, I know that Dark Angels were supposed to come out around the same time as. Death Guard, but COVID has since uh, ruined the release schedule. So uh, I guess you can look forward to those two coming up, as well as uh, something that we mentioned at the beginning of the show, which was diving into mission. We can pick a mission and figure out how to uh, to break it. Maybe uh, maybe that one awful one where the uh, deployment is hammer and anvil, but you are missing like six inches on each side try to figure out how the best way to, to, to play that mission is because it's the worst. Yeah. So what I'm thinking is actually um, for our listeners who have taken a hiatus from 40K due to Rona and a disc change and everything, mm-hmm. uh, why don't we set the stage for what the meta currently looks like uh, based off what's currently released, uh, ninth edition, and what's currently is still relevant and strong. Basically, um, the Psychic Awakenings, uh, the Sisters Codex came out in the very end of 8th, and then the Psychic Awakenings that came out near the end of 8th, uh, those tend to be what are, have kind of floated to the top meta-wise for the few events that are still happening. Right on, and I guess what, uh, I would say like maybe the, the other ninth edition books, but it, <laughs> from what they were talking about with Death Guard, uh, a lot of the Close the Gap Marine armies are uh, going to go the way of the Dodo. <laughs> yeah. I um real fast to wrap up the Death Guard. Uh, 
what I enjoy is we had three completely different answers off of one book uh, and, and to tie this into everything else, it feels like there were a lot of options. They gave us a lot and I'm looking forward to that in the other new codexes as they come out. So we'll definitely cover that as it comes. Um, but yeah, definitely. I also like the idea of discussing the meta as it stands, kind of take the screenshot of this is what we perceive to be the best list. This is what you have to prepare for. Um, and these are the missions that we are playing until something changes. They give us updated mission pack or anything. This is what we're playing with these armies. How can we optimize this and perform the best? So I, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, who wants to close this yeah. out? I'll, I'll, I'll start us out real quick. Um, Before. I'd say the best way to get an, uh, an answer is to go on the internet and say the wrong one. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just give, uh, just out of nowhere, uh, what I currently think are the armies to worry about and a quick blurb on what I think why this is my kind of observation of the current meta snapshot. And then I want you guys to basically just poke holes in it and then we'll have a kind of an emergent discussion. Uh, so this isn't, this isn't an order. This is more just, uh, the order I list these guys is not where they actually are. It's just the ones I'm thinking about. Um, Dark Angels. Uh, I think right now it's kind of we're, we're in a weird spot where we have Rona and they know their supplements about to drop and there's just not events happening on happening. So I think uh, we're they aren't we mentioned they aren't setting the world on fire. I think that's just because the world is kind of collectively holding their breath. Uh, but I think they they've always kind of been they've been low key good for the past year and then this the new supplement kind of made it even better along with the new codex. Uh, so they're definitely one I'm worried about. Uh, Harlequins uh, just play the ninth edition game so well, uh, and even though they're they don't their shooting phase is kind of non-existent. I know some people say fusion pistols, but that gets a very strong reaction from a lot of people, and I'm kind of the of that mindset. I don't like fusion pistols, but they just the amount of agency they give the Harlequin player is just really good into ninth edition missions. So they're up there for me. Uh, a, a, Someone with reps with Harlequins always scares me and always concerns me no matter what I'm running. Uh, Sisters, I'm biased, but uh, Sisters are very strong. Uh, they do the MSU thing very well. They control dice very well. Uh, and they kind of, this is going to trigger people, but I think they do. They also do what Gene Steer Cult do, but they do it better and they do it way more reliably. Uh, they just trade, 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 and then they out MSU you when everything's dead. Uh, Marines, especially White Scars. Uh, just because speed is king, especially in this mission. Uh, but Marines, their book is really good. Um, I'm a little lukewarm on Blood Angels and Wolves. I think their supplements try to shoehorn them too hard into certain units. Uh, and if those units are good, the supplement is good. If the units that you're shoehorning you into are bad in the current meta, then they're bad. Uh, I wish... Like, for example, I think Wolves, they kind of shoehorn you into Thunderwolf Cavalry, and it looks like they hammered um, Wolf in, like, four different ways, which I don't understand. I wish they had kind of, like, given the player a little... You know, I wish they just hadn't pushed certain units so much. Uh, Death Watch, uh, I think Death Watch is lurking in the shadows, and they honestly kind of scare me, and I think people are still kind of, like, figuring them out, and I think that's a book that we're going to have to worry about for for years honestly just the amount of customization and jank that they can do uh necrons uh it took a while for people to figure them out but i'm starting to see this few events that are going on they're they're consistently starting to claw back up there uh into like the podium finishes uh and then of course uh death guard they look very good they look very strong uh and i think they're not going anywhere so that's it for me marines especially scars harlequins sisters uh, Death Watch, uh, Necrons, and uh, Death Guard. Uh, and I know, for, I know for a fact I just forgot to drop one, but those are those are that's kind of like my list of like who I'm worried about in the current meta. I mean, right, as, I a, as a um, I'd say as an Imperial Guard player, I, I, I'm I'm worried about everything. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, uh, everything in that list is uh, absolutely 100 uh, correct in my opinion. I would also probably put Custodes up there. Right, I think Custodes are also on the rise, especially with the uh, the Forge World update. I think uh, I think Custodes still very much want to dodge um, Chaos armies that are not going wide on Death Guard. 
Uh, so any kind of uh, like the TJ Lanigan style list, I think honestly just just dumps all over Custodes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think uh, anything with good mortal wound output really gives them a hard time. Uh, so I think Custodes can feel a little bit binary. Um, and it's one of those armies that anyone can grab, you know, uh, spend 400 bucks on five boxes and then borrow like a friend's, uh, a friend's like Forge World kit. You know, some uh the jump pack boys or a telemon or something like that, and hey, you got yourself custodies army. Uh and people are already kind of gearing up. Uh people I think gearing up to kill T five, three wound power armor models was already kind of like the thing, because Gravis, Blade Guard veterans, and and now Death Guard even more so. I think people are gonna lean into stuff that kind of kills that profile and or maybe leaning more to mortal wounds. And that's not great for custodies uh they are durable on a model per model basis but across the entire army they tend to have less wounds than equivalent style armies um i'm pretty sure if you put a custodies army a death guard army 2000 points side by side uh they'd be similar in durability but custodies would actually have less you know net wounds uh so they don't really want to see that type of weaponry and uh and um mortals but they are they did they did get better. I just think the meta got also got more the rules got better, especially the Forge World stuff, but I think the meta got more hostile towards them. Gotcha. John, you were trying to say something. I'm sorry, I cut you off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're uh, you're all good. Um you know, Tim and I do have a lot of similar opinions on um what exactly I think is the competitive stuff right now. Um Space Marines is a blanket, I still see us top dog. Um even though I think Death Guard should be forcing them to change their ways. It also has to be said, whenever there's like a meta change, changing agency in there, a month after it comes out, you're still going to go to, if you go to a tournament, you're going to go to a tournament, you're going to play against some guy who's like, yeah, I heard about Death Guard, but I haven't played against them yet, so I'm just doing my, my same thing. Like, you know, right after the Space Marine Codex came out, like, we thought that they hard countered Gene Store Cult, so a lot of people stopped playing Gene Store Cult. Well, if you just, you know, assumed that Gene Store Cult were gone, you could still see a Gene Store Cult player doing the exact same old tricks a month or two later, and just... You know, even even though you're not Space Marines, even though there's a meta immunity, you mm-hmm. don't have immunity. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like there's going to be Blood Angel players who are still like, yeah, this list would literally auto lose to Death Guard. But, well, you're not playing Death Guard, so let's have a game. Um, you know, that can happen round two, three of a tournament, like literally no problem. Um, White Scar is still great. I think that White Scars and Dark Angels especially um, and Ultramarines are well positioned to um, play with Death Guard. I think those are my top three marine chapters right now. Um, I'm super excited about the Dark Angel Codex. That's that's another army I'm ready to do. Um, I actually don't rate Harlequins that highly. I've got Necrons right up there, um, and then um, I you know for the reasons Tim mentioned, I, I really like Necrons right now. And then um, pure demons, specifically a Slanesh list, or um, you know just like the Super Chicken Pink Wars Mortal Wound spam, and then um, Death Guard. Those are my ones that I'm really, really watching for. Uh, sis- sisters also have to be said, of course. Sisters are, you know, r- right in contention for best army in the game. I think that they're not quite best army in the game, but they're easily in my top three. Right on. Dan? Yeah, so uh, my number one is Space Marines. And really, you could say like one, two, and three, depending on chapter you want to go with. Um after that, I haven't been to enough large events to really have a feel for like the minutia of the meta. Um, to me, I perceive the way Harlequin, Harlequins play the mission as quite strong, but I, I don't know if I want to rate them super high because they're a very high skill cap army that is very fragile. Like they can just get tabled. Um, and again, with Death Guard, if if they misplay that Death Guard matchup suddenly that's like an army of toughness too <laughs> that just dies um so I'm, I'm not sure if i perceive them as high as they were uh before the death card release i actually think admech like anytime i'm writing a list and maybe i'm going a little bit sideways of of what i think the like top meta armies are but like anytime i'm writing a list it's just like can i survive an admech shooting phase if i've got mediocre terrain so they don't play the mission super well, but they can just kind of table people turn two, turn three, and then just move out. So I don't know. I would say like right now, Marines number one, some form of a chaos soup that 
is always just changing is going to be number two, uh, then I would say like kind of Admech or, or even an Imperial Guard gun line, like like that just true offense, especially with the cap to modifiers to hit, I personally just perceive as being very strong and, and maybe not podium level, but you have to learn to play around them. Um, oh, and of course, like Sisters of Battle. There we go. That's my that's my top three. <laughs> Sisters of Battle are nuts. Uh, I haven't even played them, but just what they can do, their MS, their ability to play MSU, uh, getting into cover, ignoring AP1, suddenly your light arms fire. Like You, you can volume of dice them down, but they're really hard to kill. Um, Sisters are probably, to me, the biggest boogeyman right now just because I don't have enough experience against them, and they seem to just have tools for everything, and Miracle Dice. Any any competitive game, the more variables you can remove, the more likely your strategy is to win. Miracle Dice remove variables. So, there. <laughs> right on. I agree. I mean, uh, I, in my opinion, Sisters are also the big boogeyman. I also have no practice against them and i've just every so often i'll ask him what, what does this do how does this work and and he'll be like oh yeah, yeah, yeah i can reach out you know an extra 12 inches on my meltas and i can just slip you know straight up two sixes in my miracle dice and into one shot you know and reload your meltas and shoot again it's just it's terrifying it's i'll be honest it's very cathartic to me especially like right before albany like when i just kind of like yoloed up there and people are like what does this do what does this do or like tim your unit your list has a bunch of units and i don't recognize i'm like oh you you'll recognize what these units. every these units will be a household name next month and then like <laughs> someone's kind of like oh well i don't know what that list does but i just know that like Tim is hot on it, so I probably don't want to play it. And then, like, afterwards, Chris Ross is like, oh, my God, you guys don't play Tim's list. And I'll be honest, super cathartic for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the reason we just don't see them a lot is they, for so long, just, like, you couldn't collect them and they didn't have all this stuff. Nobody had, like, everyone's got Space Marines or Death Guard lying around because of all the box releases we got. Everyone's got certain armies, like, they have pieces of. No one had any Sisters of Battle floating around. So, like, it's a dedication to get into Sisters of Battle, and they're an ex a more expensive army because they're so intricate, and it's a high model count, similar yeah. to Admech. It's and it's kind of, price-wise, it's kind of like collecting an Admech or Gene Stir Cult, uh, and it's it's definitely a uh, act of love to paint them. Uh, eBay is filled with secondhand lots of fully assembled, like, 3,000-point armies that have no paint on them. Uh, because someone went out and just basically bought like you know three thousand points of boxes, assembled all of it, and then got through like three sisters, you know. And by the time and three sisters means you have to paint like forty Florida leases all over the armor, and they're just like, you know what? I just don't, I just don't have it in me, and they just get overwhelmed. Exactly, and and I think that play honestly, in a way, plays into their strength because just there's so there's not a lot of sisters players so there's not a lot of people with practice against sisters yeah. so it's it's an army you run into like one out of every four events yeah and, uh, you and... run into someone running like a really well thought out like list that like does a lot of stuff but i they will they'll lose some power as people start to like learn their tricks and everything but um just like harlequins i think you know it, it becomes like kind of like a a, a skill cap uh game because they do have they trade really well in melee and an assault they can be situationally fast they can be situationally durable but most importantly uh if the sister's pilot knows uh how to manage his resources because the second resource pool you have to manage and he can at key time remove variability at key times and he executes a good plan uh that's that's a lot to overcome yeah agreed <laughs> Uh, we are like past the hour mark, uh, so we should probably do some final thoughts and wrap up. But we've got obviously a ton we can continue talking about next week. And hopefully if we get some comments or feedback uh, on specifically what people want us to talk about, we can, we'll can we absolutely go into that. Uh, I would love to get more in-depth into the Sisters of Battle because I know Tim obviously plays them and does well with them. But Lennon also uh, is a Sisters of Battle player and has uh, some soup lists that I know he's worked on and, and a bunch of stuff. So we have a lot of good Sisters of Battle that we can talk about uh, moving forward as well. So um, 
with that, uh, does anyone else have final thoughts? I hate Sisters of Battle. Okay, thanks, bye. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Lennon, anything from you? Uh, very excited to see what's coming up. Um, GW did have their little preview this morning, so we know that there are more Sisters units coming. Uh, we know there's like some kind of campaign coming. Uh, you know, we've uh, it's January. We've got Death Guard right now. Uh, supposedly we're getting, you know, Dark Angels and De- uh, Dark Eldar in the next two months. Um, you know, knock on wood, COVID uh, supply lines. We're supposed to see them in February and March. So super excited about that. Um, seems like uh, after a bit of a dead period where we got the Marine and Necron Codex, then we got like random supplements that didn't actually change anything like Space Wolves. And now we're starting to get that flood of new codexes for 9th edition. Super excited about that. Lots to to learn, lots to paint, and uh, just really hoping that we're a couple months away now from uh, revamping the tournament scene. Yeah. All right. Um, well, I am going to go look at buying a Sisters of Battle army now. So with that being said, uh, thanks everyone for listening, and uh, we'll be back next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.